Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be using UV resin with my Aquacast Eco resin to see if I can recreate the beautiful pearlescent iridescent effects you get inside shells. I've always loved looking at the insides of shells. I think they're so magical and I really wanted to create that. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. If you think that sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Here are the silicon moulds I'm using today. I have a large shell and a small shell. I also have my pigments ready. I've chosen Autumn Sun and Autumn Harvest from Homeware Design. Now all I need is my Aquacast and I can get making my shells. I needed 155 grams of water and 436 grams of Aquacast powder. I worked out those measurements by putting the moulds on my scales, filling them with water to weigh the volume and then I used the Aquacast calculator on the Elichem website which tells you exactly how much water and powder you will need. I like to use large silicon jugs for mixing Aquacast. They work really well, they're much easier to clean because all you have to do is squeeze them when the residue has you know, cured and dried and just give it a bash and everything just falls out of the jug so it's nice and easy. So if there's anybody watching who's wondering what Aquacast actually is, let me explain. Aquacast is a casting compound made by Elichem Resins. It's an environmentally friendly fusion of polymer and powder and all it needs is the addition of water from the tap to create beautiful items for around your home. And you might be wondering what makes it better than good old plaster of Paris? Well, apart from the durability and strength, the main thing is it takes pigment in a way that plaster of Paris wouldn't. So yeah, if you tried adding pigment to plaster of Paris, it would be very um, subtle and pastel. But with this, you can make intense colours or pale colours, however you want them, really. It's much more versatile and it accepts that colour so much better. It's available in the UK and the USA. So if you would like to get yourself some, check out my links in the video description along with the 15% discount code. And now it's time to add the pigment. So first of all, I'm using Autumn Sun from Homeware Design. These pigments are designed specifically for using with casting compounds or eco resins as they're otherwise known as. I'm not keen on the phrase eco resin. I think it's a bit misleading somehow, but that's what these are commonly known as eco resins. And yeah, that pigment is specifically for them. And for these first two shells, I decided to keep my colours quite pale. I just wanted it to look quite natural. But I did have another go afterwards with, you know, a little bit more pigment. And it made a big difference, actually. But anyway, there's my main colour in. And then I took a little bit of the Autumn Harvest pigment. Just a couple of drops in there. And then just stirred it a little bit so that it wasn't combined thoroughly. And that way you get some beautiful patterns. Patterns occurring as you pour the aquacast into the moulds and you'll see that in just a moment. And here we go. I'm starting with the smallest one and I'm only going to partially fill it at first so that I can move the aquacast around inside the mould and make sure it's re reached all the extremities because as you can see there's that point right at the far end and I needed to make sure it was nicely filled and you know no air pockets trapped and so once i knew the aquacast had reached that end i gave it a good squeeze and then added the rest of the aquacast 
One thing I did find after I'd finished pouring the second shell, the biggest one, was that most of the detail had been poured away into the first one. So at this stage I would recommend adding a little bit more of the darker pigment and giving it a gentle stir again like before. So make sure you get a lot of that you know, nice effect in the second mould. Yeah, I did find that I lost quite a lot of it in the first one. And it was really nice when it came out of the mould, of the smaller one, but not so much of this larger one. As you can see, there's not much left in there. Anyway, it's just the same process again now, so I'm going to zip through it. And yeah, there was a lot of tapping of the sides to make sure all the air bubbles reach the top and a lot of banging on the table as well. Those vibrations really help the air bubbles reach the top too. Okay, after about an hour, they were ready to come out of the moulds. You can leave it as long as you want. You don't have to rush to get it out because Aquacast doesn't sweat in the same way as the two-part eco resins do. So you don't have to worry about that. You can leave it in as long as you like. And so let's get these out of the moulds. Because this was my first time using them, I was a bit worried about getting the moulds off, but they weren't too bad, especially the small one. That came out easily and that looks really pretty, doesn't it? Nice subtle patterns on there with that extra pigment I put in and yeah I like that so yeah off camera after I'd done these I did do some more and it was just in the same way with the same pigments but I added a little bit extra and you'll see those soon the reason I made a couple more was because I wanted to have a practice of the next step before filming it um, yeah, I wanted to just see how it would work. So I had a practice and there you go. I'm just pulling the end off first. And once that end was off, I found that the rest came off fairly easily. And yeah, it's that's what it's like when you get a new mould. It takes a few uses to work out the best way of demoulding. And this actually seems to be the best way. Right, so look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I think this is another new mould that I'm really into. I really could use this quite a lot. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. And I liked it more when I had a second go with it off camera and used some more pigment. But I love this. It's nice and subtle. I think this shell mould would work really well for making candles. That cavity would work so well if it was filled with candle wax, don't you think? Definitely both of them would work well as candles, actually. But that's not what I'm doing today. Let's see what we're going to do next. So, as I said, I made a practice one as well. And I wanted to find out what it would be like if I painted it. And there you can see that just with paint on, it looks really pretty. And I could have just left it like that. I used pearlescent paints for it and they did work so nice. It's the um, Jacquard Lumiere pearlescent paints that I've used. So a little bit of pink and a little bit of white that look beautiful. But that's what I did before adding the uh, UV resin, which today's video is about. So I painted it and then added UV resin and um, chameleon powders on top. But I did want to find out what would happen if I just used the UV resin and chameleon powders without... Um, painting first so that large one that you've just seen had paint and then uv resin and chameleon powders but for this next one i'm just going to use uv resin and chameleon powders to see if you actually do need to paint it first to get the same effect the UV resin I'm using today is J Addiction's Low Viscosity UV resin. I chose that because it's nice and thin and runny and it moves about easily and I thought that would be perfect for this. But if you haven't got that, any other kind of UV resin will work as well. And as you can see, because it's the low viscosity, I can move it around easily without even touching it. Although I did need to manipulate it to make sure it was completely covered right up to the top edge. And for that, I'm just using a lollipop stick just to tease it to the edges, as you can see there. Uh, you could use a brush or 
something else. I prefer not to use a brush. Uh, obviously, then you've got to clean it and everything. But yeah, a lollipop stick did the trick nicely. And I'm just moving it around, making sure it's nicely covered before curing it under the lamp for about 30 seconds. And the reason I'm only giving it a short amount of time under the UV lamp is because I need the UV resin to still be tacky so that the chameleon flakes in the next step will stick to it nicely. Right, so I have my pot of purple pink chameleon flakes from Let's Resin and I just use the brush that comes with them to scoop some out or even you can just pour it in because it uses quite a lot and then just brush it into the UV resin and it just sticks eventually. At first I, I'm really gentle and I just move the flakes around trying not to touch the UV resin because I didn't want to disturb that tacky resin with my brush. Once it's all you know moved around you can brush the whole thing properly with the brush if you get what I mean but at this stage I'm trying not to make too much contact so there you can see it's sticking on nicely and covering nicely and I just kept adding some more after a while I decided to change the colour so that I could have a bit of a contrast towards the top edge of the shell I can't remember which one I used actually but it was more of I think it was the olive and pink one pink olive or something like that but yeah just it comes the pack comes with all different choices so you can really just experiment with it so once all the uv resin was co covered with the chameleon flakes i was being a lot firmer with the brush as you can see here just smoothing it all down and it starts to get really shiny the more you brush it and so what i did once i would finished with that was i took my big nylon decorators brush brushed off any excess that I didn't need and just carried on brushing it and it really polished it up. It's probably the most fun part. I really like brushing it to polish it. So yeah, I think the end results are absolutely gorgeous. And here's the one I've just done next to the one that's only painted. And they both look beautiful in different ways, don't they? But now I'm going to very quickly speed through this. But basically, all I'm doing is exactly the same thing again on top of the paint. Because, as I mentioned already, I wanted to see if there was very much difference having that paint undercoat. So let's see how it turned out. Well, I could see straight away that the colours were definitely more noticeable, more intense. So the one I've just done with the paint undercoat is on the right and the other one is on obviously on the left. And it's much more subtle without the paint underneath, but you definitely don't need paint underneath. There's a definite difference for sure, but yeah. I don't think you need the paint underneath. It depends what level of intensity you want. If you want really dark results, you could put much darker paint underneath. So what you've just seen me use is the Chameleon Flakes and they were a lovely pastel colour. But for this one, I decided to try the Intense Chameleon Flakes. The Intense Colour Shift Chameleon Flakes, they're called. They're also from Let's Resin and I chose the Fuchsia one. I wanted to see what the darker colour would look like on this bigger one. And so it's exactly the same process all over again, just with different colours. So let's have a look to see how this one turned out. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention before is it's important when you're finished to put it under the UV lamp for around three minutes to give it chance to fully cure because obviously it only had 30 seconds before because we wanted it still tacky but it did does need still fully cure and the light should still penetrate okay through the chameleon flakes. Anyway, once that was done, I gave it another good brush with that nylon brush to polish it and there we have it it was nice with that darker base but i found the sides were a little bit patchy looking and so yeah definitely with the other one if you have let's just have a look that one 
you can see that the colours work so much better on the sides and that was painted before adding the flakes. And so, yeah, I'm thinking twice now about whether it's better to paint first or not because the results on my painted one were definitely better than the unpainted one. Anyway, after that, because it was a little bit patchy, I did another layer of UV resin and added another layer of chameleon flakes and it wasn't patchy after that. It looked a lot better with two layers. And here you can just see me using my buffing block, which is for nails, but it works really good on Aquacast, just to clean up a patch where I'd got UV resin and chameleon flakes where I didn't want them. And so that's all nicely tidied up. Let's have a look at them all together. So here they are all together. And you can see there's quite a variation, even though I used the same colours on all of them. And that's because some of them have got the undercoat of acrylic paint and also the fact that as the light changes, depending on the angle you're looking from, that will change the colours too. They change from one colour to the other as the light changes. Have a look here, look. Do you see how it goes from pink to green? Yeah, I, I love it. I love these um, chameleon flakes. And... I think the contrast of the shiny, colourful parts next to the matte of the Aquacast works so well. It's such a brilliant contrast. I love them. So, yeah, I'm very happy with them. And I've just realised, I told you a bit of a fib, I didn't use the same colours on all of them because on one of them I used those intense chameleon flakes, didn't I? And that did make a difference. But yeah, other than that, all the colours were the same. But the main thing is that we found out today is that you can use UV resin on Aquacast and it complements it beautifully. So we've come to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I enjoyed making this one. It was lots of fun. If you would like to subscribe and you haven't already done so, please do. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.